hello everybody and in this video i'm going to try uh, to uh, give you an overview about the web architecture uh, meaning which are the components which are the technologies that are involved uh, today in a modern uh, set of uh, uh, applications and software that compose uh, a web application okay uh, the idea is that we try to uh, understand uh, what is the web from a technical point of view and this architecture, main, meaning uh, its main components, uh, uh, the software, uh, mainly the software components that compose uh, an application and the kind of network communication that uh, uh, they uh, set up uh, in order to collaborate and cooperate uh, to deliver the uh, actual web, web application. We'll also have a look uh, at the architectural patterns, how, how, how stuff is fitting together. And this is sort of an overview of, uh, of the different uh, type of um, components and their interaction that uh, we uh, will of course uh, see in much more detail uh, in the future in the next uh, uh, in the next weeks uh, basically so today is basically an overview for people who don't have uh, yet experience with a web application with a focus on the modern technologies so what is used today we are not going to do a, a full uh, historical view um, and uh, don't uh, um, don't worry if you don't understand fully every step because uh, all of these technologies will be uh, taking over and uh, explain more detail uh, in later lectures okay uh, this is just the initial overview and so i i would like to to start from this picture uh, that uh, uh, tries to summarize uh, the main components uh, of what we have in a, in a web application basically we have the users uh, so these are and or should be you know the main uh, the main component the main actor in our uh, in our system we are providing a service to users and the users uh, are interacting with the web application through some front-end application basically it includes the browser plus the code that runs uh, into the browser and uh, this application uh, will need of course to communicate uh, and to exchange data and to request data uh, from a server from a back-end server so the whole web application today is split into a front-end which is the part uh, part that runs uh, on the on the user's computer inside the browser basically so the browsers and uh, everything that is inside the browser and a back-end uh, component uh, which is everything that runs on the server mm -hmm. of course uh, we can imagine that uh, between the uh, browser and the server we have here uh, a disconnection so the, the picture they're close together but here we have the, all the internet uh, uh, and so we may have uh, all the networking technologies that allow any client any uh, browser to communicate with any server by minimizing the delay maximizing the bandwidth and so on okay from the point of view of a web application developer uh, we know that there is uh, you know a network connection here and uh, but we, it's not explicit we are not programming at this level we are programming the application that uses this kind of connection okay but we know that these two uh, logically they are part of the same application so they, they are in this logical boundary but physically they are separated totally separated one is on the user's computer and the other is on a data center somewhere in the world so let's start to analyze uh, one by one the main components of this picture and as i said we will have uh, basically one one future chapter for each of them to go uh, deeper in detail uh, the first one is the front end uh, the first one we are going to to explain are, are, is the front end part uh, that basically includes uh, uh, the browsers uh, i using the, the generic term browser they could be a you know the chrome uh, edge uh, safari or um, firefox or even more strange browsers that we may have uh, that uh, are uh, software that uh, are able to uh, interpret uh, and uh, uh, understand a lot of different languages uh, for uh, for their purposes so we'll try to understand a bit better what is involved inside the browser so basically the the, the simple view is that uh, a browser is a tool for displaying web pages mm -hmm. so a web page is basically this is something that is true since 25 years basically uh, this general picture didn't change what uh, happened is that we 
uh, added a lot and a lot of further technologies to make this web page better, faster, nicer, and more responsive, and so on. Hmm? But the basic idea is that uh, uh, the, the browser uh, is a software that enables me to visualize and interact with the web page. And technically, the web page is composed of an HTML file, so a, a text file in the HTML format. HTML is a language that you can basically learn in five minutes uh, then of course there will be many <laughs> many details or many uh, corner cases to to, to study but uh, it's a very simple description language for defining the structure of a page and uh, this html file may include in some way uh, some images so uh, html is not just text but also images uh, uh, styles uh, in the form of a declarative uh, style sheets uh, called the CSS cascading style sheets with uh, where we are declaring how uh, all the visual aspects uh, of the page so the colors the fonts the spacing uh, the alignment and so on and plus all the dynamic behavior so JavaScript files uh, will also be included into an HTML file and uh, all of this will run inside the browser Okay, so uh, through the network connection that we saw before, the uh, browser is pulling the HTML file uh, and pulling the CSS files that are included in that, pulling the JavaScript files, pulling all the image files and so on. And they all uh, are composed into one uh, organic web page uh, that the user will see as a, as a whole, as a just a, a single interface. And all of these files, of this content, uh, initially is unknown to the browser the browser doesn't know what kind of content is going to to show because all this information all this content is stored or is generated by a server hmm? uh, there's the difference between stores stored and generated because in the first case it means that the, uh, the server already contains the file for example an image file was hand uh, designed by someone with uh, Photoshop or, or other tools uh, and it's just a file which is stored on a server and the server just has to provide that file to the browser when the browser will request it or also the JavaScript code is probably something that we are writing by hand our application and so from the point of view of the server it's just a file that is sitting there that somebody wrote and the browser will just have to to ship this file there hmm? Uh, the HTML file uh, in many cases is not uh, uh, already there. And the HTML will be in many cases generated dynamically, so there will be an application software that will generate the HTML file. So in this case, uh, the server is providing a file, the HTML, which doesn't exist yet, but is being generated and constructed on the fly when the browser will request it. Uh, okay, so this is the, the simple picture. If you want some, uh, to know something more about the HTML, I can point you again to the, to the Mozilla Developer Network, uh, where we already find all the JavaScript documentation. There's also a section on learning HTML. You can <laughs> decide the speed uh, at which you, you want to learn it and the depth uh, in which you want to learn it, depending on, on, on your needs. We will, uh, of course, uh, give some, some hints or uh, um, the, the, the key points in, in the next lecture about uh, the, the front end. Um, so once the browser receives all the information that we described before, um, it, now it has, it, it has got uh, all these files uh, and uh, uh, so the HTML file, one or more CSS files, one or more JavaScript files, zero or more uh, images and whatever, and they compose this, this, the page is basically displayed on the screen here and the users can view it so basically the page the purpose of the browser is the first purpose of the browser is to show the page to the user and the user once uh, is looking at the page he may or he, may, he or they may interact with the page uh, not with the page itself but there may be some buttons uh, there may be some links uh, uh, there may be some uh, uh, text areas where you can write uh, uh, there's an OK button here, there will be a menu with uh, some uh, elements and so on. We may have some checkboxes to select, uh, we may have some drop-down menu to open where we have a list of options uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. So the page contains interactive elements 
and the user is uh, assumed to be able to interact with these elements this in this kind of interaction is basically managed by uh, the browser itself through a general mechanism uh, based on events so every time the user does something interacts in some way with the content of the web page and this content is generated by the html but it's also customized by css and maybe modified by the javascript so it's a dynamic con content and every time a user interacts with that di this dynamic content the user will generate uh, some events uh, that are handled by the browser to i don't know highlight the button or open uh, the drop down menu or uh, validate the text into a box and so on hmm? uh, so the uh, the browser already has some predefined behaviors for the interactive elements uh, but uh, our javascript code may also capture one or more of these events and customize personalize uh, what happens in that specific uh, action according to that specification of the user so we can extend what the browser does in response to user interaction just by capturing and redefining the behavior of the event handler saying okay i am going to handle this event in my javascript code instead of letting the browser manage the default behavior for for the event itself and so that is how we extend the web application how we create the interaction in any web application just by capturing the user events and defining what to do and what the javascript could, could do here is basically everything so it gives a full control over the styles and over the content of the page um for that we this will be what we are going to learn and one other action one special action that uh, is able uh, that the users are able to do is to exit from one web page and go to another page hmm? so this was the default behavior of the web uh, when we had only page based navigation on everything you could do was just to click on a link uh, here and uh, this link will uh, open a new page uh, with new contents okay uh, this is always possible whenever this happens of course uh, all the content here the javascript the CSS, the html the pictures is thrown away is discarded and the new page is is requested to the server and is loaded from from scratch from zero so that it will be recreate or re restart the cycle from scratch uh, with a new content hmm? um, in uh, the as we will see in the current uh, applications we try basically to avoid this uh, because we will be losing all the javascript uh, that we loaded and all the values inside the javascript variables uh, that will compose the state of the application mm -hmm. so we'll try to uh, develop applications that are based on a single page so there is no navigation to separate pages uh, to separate new HTMLs, uh, but just everything will be managed through internal navigation inside inside the same web page and this is what uh, we will learn to do uh, with the react framework and all of this complexity, of course, uh, uh, reflects uh, on the internal uh, structure of a web browser. So today, web browsers are <laughs> nearly as complex as uh, operating systems, basically. They have a lot of components. Uh, here we can uh, recognize the, the, the user interface layer, hmm, where uh, the uh, browser will generate, actually, the user interface and capture the event. This part uh, will, of course, interact with the um with the uh, operating system uh, um, graphical user interface um where of course uh, the 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 events and the interaction is managed by the operating system and then is given to the browser uh there is a browser engine uh, that is basically uh, the part uh, that links uh, um, the user behavior with the page uh, content uh, rendering engine is the the most uh, complex part uh, that takes all this information so the html uh, the css uh, uh, the javascript and so on and will compose the page render the page putting together all the information to decide what should go into the page how it should be um, visualized uh, what events should be captured and so on and then this rendering engine will dispatch uh, operation to the networking phase whenever I'm loading some external resource, some CSS, some image, some external data. There's a natural networking module that uh, will, of course, communicate uh, through the HTTP protocol with the servers. 
uh, outside with anything that is outside the browser we'll have a javascript interpreter that will run uh, our code and will uh, of course interact with the rendering engine uh, so that every time i write we write something we are interacting with the engine because we are changing some content in the page most likely um, and then of course uh, we have some sort of widgets or this interface backend uh, where all the uh, graphical aspects of the page are are, are visualized uh, modern browsers also have a data persistent layer that can be uh, used to store information inside a single page or across different pages so there's an, an api for us that the javascript code of course can also access to store some data so this is but this is just a, a very simplified picture the, the the real internal architecture of a browser today it's very complex both for the function for the functionality reason because a browser really does a lot of stuff and also for performance reasons so much of the complexity is due to the fact that every operation every the interpretation of javascript code the rendering of the page the reaction time for a user action should be really fast and optimized and so that's why browsers really are really pushing the um, the uh, the performance aspects okay uh, also browsers are also uh, development environments today uh, because all the browsers already contain some sort of development tools uh, that are there are already integrated into the browsers even if normal users no, don't, don't know about them so imagine i'm just pulling a firefox browser right on our website and in the developer menu here um, if you you can open the tools uh, which is a, a, a totally uh, a complex uh, debugger basically where you can let me just zoom a bit uh, the the font size here okay you can inspect the content of the page so you can see the html corresponding to different parts of the page and you can explore them explore the different content uh, and uh, select uh, and check uh, now, which part uh, of the HTML code is uh, generating which part of the page. So, for example, you want to know uh, how this paragraph is formatted. I can select it and it, it tells me that it's a, an HTML paragraph uh, of type P with all the CSS, all the styles applied to the, these elements here in the styles uh, uh, panel and all the measurements. So the size uh, and the margins uh, that will this element is, is currently uh, occupying on the page okay so uh, this is the interaction between html and css uh, that will decide the um how this text uh, this is just a text uh, elite intelligent interacting system is just a text uh, string but how the, where and how this text uh, will be displayed in the page hmm? so we are going to learn this this kind of interaction and inside the inspector we also have uh, uh, um, a network uh, panel that will show us uh, what kind of uh, uh, network connection of requests uh, on, over the HTTP protocol basically uh, our browser is doing to the server okay so every single request uh, correspond every single line here correspond to different HTTP request uh, and this request uh, for this request we can see all the information we will see more detail when we deal about uh, with HTTP we also have an integrated debugger where we can uh, see and debug uh, uh, all the uh, JavaScript code that we have in our page. For example, here it's not easy to do that because it's it's, uh, it's minimized. It's uh, very compressed, uh, and, and so on. Uh, style editor for modifying the style sheets. So we have the different style sheets that we are loading. We can try to modify them on the fly to debug them. This all of this is uh, happening uh, on the inside the browser. So we are just playing with and modifying the content of the page displayed currently by the user. We are not really modifying the application. But uh, for analysis and for debug, it's a very precious element. Then when we understood something, when we found a bug, we can go to the server and modify the files that compose this page and reload the application or, re or reload the page. Um, okay. So this uh, is something that uh, is basically even more powerful than the debugger that we have inside Node.js uh, and we'll see that when we move to the browser we have a, a much more uh, sophisticated debugging environment basically. Hmm. 
and uh, basically when we are developing we are we tend to have this panel always open so that you can see warning and, and errors basically we also have here a javascript console uh, where we can uh, write uh, uh, javascript expressions uh, uh, like three plus two that should be five and so on so we have a javascript interpreter inside the, the developer console of the browser uh, that already has access to the content of the page hmm? this is something that we are going we are going to see soon um, and uh, we can imagine how can the browser uh, or can the javascript that again we are using can how can it access the content of the page okay uh, this is just a visual page uh, uh, that is composed uh, by parsing an HTML file and combining it with some style sheets uh, and doing a lot of computations for layout, measurements, fonts, and so on. Uh, it would be really impossible or very demanding uh, for our JavaScript code to see the uh, the web page uh, at the at the uh, text level, at the HTML level. This would be the content of the web page, and if you want to change some some text or modify something, you should really uh, find the right spot into a, a, a file that, which is thousands of lines long uh, and modify that. Now, that would be really impossible to work with. So the browser is providing to our JavaScript code a very structured way of the content of the page. And this way is called the DOM, the document object model, uh, which is actually a, an object model, hmm, like the name says. Uh, so a, a model a, um, a programming model, so a data structure, hmm? object-oriented, an object-oriented data structure that describes the current content of the page. Uh, so the page is represented as a tree of elements starting from a root uh, element, which is always called document, uh, root node, then then will uh, decompose the document between the head and the body of the HTML file, and inside the body we may have different uh, titles, paragraphs, links, and so on, and attributes. So all the elements of the page are representing as a tree. This tree is the, the model, huh? the model of the document, an object model representing the document, hmm? DOM, document object model. And uh, uh, so our JavaScript code can read and write, uh, can access this uh, model uh, and uh, so learn what is currently on the page and modify it. So there is an API, the browsers are not just building this model, but they are providing an API that will uh, allow the code to pick and poke inside uh, the, this, uh, this data structure. So basically we have a shared data structure and this data structure is shared between the browser itself and our javascript code um, and uh, whenever we change something in the data structure through the proper dom api well the uh, the content of the web page is in, uh, immediately updated and whenever the user changes something by interaction on the web page well, uh, the DOM is immediately updated and the JavaScript uh, may know that information at once, immediately, in a, basically in an asynchronous way. Uh, so the, uh, the important part for the JavaScript programmer is understanding how the DOM represents a page and what is the API for manipulating this uh, DOM node, to, for finding elements, for changing the attributes, for adding new uh, names and so on. So it's an abstract and simplified way where we interact with the web page through some uh, objects inside of uh, files or really low level uh, widgets or elements and so on. Mm. So we are never really seeing the real the HTML uh, source code, but all the work we'll do will be manipulating the DOM through the DOM API. Mm. Okay. To make the page uh, more complex and to manage all the layout, uh, as we uh, as we discussed uh, earlier, uh, we are using these style sheets. Uh, so there's nothing conceptually mm, uh, changing uh, about the existence of style sheets. Basically, the page is still a set of nodes. The style sheets are just changing how these nodes, how these HTML nodes or DOM nodes, are mapping uh, onto the pages. So if these nodes are smaller or larger, if they are uh, white or black, 
if they are uh, aligned horizontally or vertically uh, or whatever all of this is controlled by the style and these tile sheets uh, also are intelligent enough to also to allow the page uh, to uh, reconfigure itself depending on the zoom level or depending on the device resolution depending on the scrolling of the page and so on so um, they are not just a fixed layout with a given number of pixels but they give high level rules uh, or how on how to compose the layout itself and uh, um, from the programming point of view <clears throat> they're not uh, uh, you know a, a complete uh, programming language but we really need to master some of it uh, uh, to create uh, decent layouts hmm? basically too because we have to position the elements on the page and the positioning of the elements or the inclusion of the elements uh, is also um, uh, de determined is basically determined by the css styles and so it's a style it's a language that we have to learn uh, uh, based on a set of rules mm -hmm. so every rule is selecting one or more elements in the page and is applying some properties to those elements so for example here we are applying the property color with the value blue to all the elements uh, that are of type h1 so basically we are saying that all the titles in the page will be blue and will be uh, 12 pixel uh, high with the by setting the 12 pixel property uh, value sorry to the to, um, font size property uh, so the language itself is quite easy because we are just uh, a set uh, a language a sub language for se for selecting elements uh, a sort of a pattern matching language uh, similar to regular expressions and uh, a set of declaration that set are set in some property the complexity of css is uh, understanding all the properties because some of them are really uh, powerful they may change significantly the layout of the page mm -hmm. so the understanding of which are the property there are hundreds of them uh, and how what is their effect on the page and what is their choice mm -hmm. uh, again here we are targeting say modern design and so many lower level layout mechanisms uh, will not be interesting to us and will immediately jump uh, to the more recent uh, solutions that try to help us in, uh, in creating an easy an easy layout uh, for our application mm -hmm. and finally we have uh, the javascript which is the the last component in our html css and js uh, uh, triangle of uh, technologies and uh, we already know that every uh, browser embeds uh, a javascript interpreter so like we had on the terminal the command line we were executing javascript inside the node.js interpreter Every browser, when you open it, it already includes a, a JS interpreter and uh, that will execute your code. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference because uh, uh, if I'm running some code on the command line, I'm running my code on my computer. But if I open a web page, I'm running somebody else's JavaScript code on my computer. And it would be a huge security risk if this code could do anything. That is why the JavaScript code inside the browser only runs inside a sandbox, so a contained environment in which it only can do some limited operation. For example, from the JavaScript sandbox in the browser, you cannot see the files on your computer, okay? Because nobody can know uh, what what you have in your computer besides the the, the web page. Basically, when you open a web page, every tab of the browser has its own sandbox in which the javascript is running so basically the javascript code doesn't even know if you have other open tabs uh, what is open currently on those tabs it's unknown um, to the code it's inaccessible to the javascript code every now and then there are some security holes where the sandbox is not perfect and it will allow some information to leak uh, through the sandbox to the javascript code but uh, ideally uh, every page has an as an isolated environment in which the code is uh, um, executed and the loading and running javascript code into a web page is actually quite easy because you just have to load the the, the, the script file through a, a specific tag which is called script uh, and uh, the browser will contact the server download the file and start running it and so all the javascript here will be run in the context of the web page 
where this script is included and this uh, javascript will have access uh, to the, all the dom and to the, all the apis uh, provided by the server and can manage all the user events and all the action that the user is doing so it has basically full control of the page if we want so we can leave some control of the page to the browser like default behavior of the elements or we can uh, assume control of every aspect of the page so when we load in a script we are totally controlling what will happen on the page depending on uh, what level of control we want to have but the browser will give us uh, anything hmm? um, all control okay this is on the uh, on the on the front end side that will be the main focus of the of the rest of the course uh, where we learn in much more detail uh, how uh, what is what are these apis uh, and uh, how we can even manage uh, the dom and the css uh, that would be the, the the focus of the rest of the course but then of course a web page only exists if, if it can get information from a server because as we know the browser starts empty something with no information and everything must be requested or downloaded uh, sorry from a server and uh, here and so this network connection here uh, is based on the http protocol which is a very uh, it started and it still is a very simple protocol uh, with a request response uh, that implements a request response uh, paradigm it means that every time the user uh, sorry the browser needs to load some information it will compose a request using this uh, http protocol this is a real example of a, of a request sent by the browser to the server when we are loading the web page of Polytechnico. so if you open uh, for example your inspector and we go to the network panel and go to the Polytechnic Torino we see a lot of network requests each of these is an HTTP request and um, each of them for each of them we can see uh, the messages that are being sent okay here is is displayed in a in a readable way but we can also have the row view here these are the actual bytes that the browser sent to the server when we open this web page hmm? that i just copied here and uh, uh, so the, the http protocol is very simple we just compose a, a set of lines uh, the first line is contains a command here and uh, 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 the address of a page for example in this case it's the home page so get the home page and all the rest are just headers uh, that modify or specify some detail about uh, uh, about this request okay so you probably already have known something about http in the uh, in the networking courses in the computer network courses um you saw that from the point of view of the network uh, and now we are saying that uh, we are seeing it from the point of view of the application that uses this request uh, in most of the cases the content of the different headers is quite transparent uh, for our uh, javascript applications uh, we just need to know that we can modify and control these headers and this will be interpreted by the by the web server differently so an, an http request is a message from the browser to a server in a simple text package composed of some lines okay and these are called uh, headers of the request and then what this, uh, the server does is to respond with another packet formatted as an http response uh, which again has the same format the first line has the status of the command to wonder means okay the request has been executed and we have a set of headers that describe uh, the content of the response so what actually I'm, I'm, uh, I'm returning a file which is 11 kilobytes long and it was last modified in this date and so on and is encoded in html so i'm describing the kind of response that i'm doing these are all the headers uh, in the in the in the web page here uh, all this uh, one per line then we have a blank line here in the middle that separates the headers from the body of the response so this uh, http response will carry a body a payload that will contain actually the resource that correspond to the request uh, 
uh, done by the uh, by the browser and basically that's it the http protocol is just uh, in 19 percent of the protocol is based on this exchange of packets where it's always unidirection so the browser asks and the server responds it may respond with a resource or with an error of course um, but this is just the basic interaction pattern request response the server is already is always ready to get requests and is always uh, or should always be ready to give answers in the form of http responses and this http protocol is, you see is a, just a text protocol of headers in separate lines so the meaning of, of the request and the meaning of the response lies in the interpretation of these header lines hmm? um, okay uh, the response may be uh, depending on the request that we, we may do so this response here the, the green one that comes from the server in some cases uh, the response may, may be empty because of some errors or because of the nature of the request in some cases we, have, we don't need to have a response the response may be just a copy of a static file so the server will just be serving us uh, a copy of the file that is saved on the server hard disk on the server file system and this happens man mainly for images, uh, JavaScript that are written by hand, style sheets that are written by hand, and so on. Everything that we write by hand is just stored as a file and will be served statically. So the statically means that the server will not do any computation on it. We'll just take the file and give it back to the, to the browser here in the body of the response. Or... Um, some resources may be dynamically generated by the server so in the response the server will uh, understand the request uh, generate some response and send it back to the browser and this always happens uh, when we are querying some data so the browser is asking the server for some information what are, what is my last last message for example did they receive any new uh, notification uh, and so on and so it's just a request uh, my javascript is requesting to the server some specific information and this information must be computed on the fly there is no file already stored with this information available uh, it's uh, dynamically generated and in most of the cases also the html pages are dynamically generated because nobody writes the whole html page by hand because for example many pages on the same website have the same components the same title the same menu bars and so they will be uh, created separately and put together on the fly uh, at, at, the, at the request time in html so the html will be composed uh, usually starting uh, from some templates and so on we will not go into the detail of the html server side html generation because we are more focusing on the front end side uh, html generation okay um, but uh, that is also one technology of, com of composing the html on the server this is for the type of response and what does this response contain well basically the http protocol doesn't care about the content okay for for the http it's just a sequence of bytes that need to be transferred we know that the, normally uh, we can transfer some web content so the basically html css and javascript files uh, that will be interpreted by the browser itself uh, that knows what to do with them or we are transferring data and this data is uh, encoded in some format in most of the cases it will be encoded into the json format which is basically javascript objects um, and the browser doesn't know what to do with this data but our javascript code will know what to do okay so basically our javascript code can ask the server for some information this information will be encoded in some form as data strings basically uh, and the javascript may use this information to update the page for example to update the notification count number in the corner of the page or something like that uh, for the point of view of the http protocol there is no difference about this kind of requests they are all just requests that need a response from the point of, the, of view of the server uh, some responses are easier because they just correspond to a static file some responses are more complex because they need to execute some code and so in the server side we will have to write some code 
Uh, and so this is the picture basically when the client is requesting something the request is uh, encoded in HTTP we have a request uh, and we have some parameters of what we are requesting and this request through the internet goes to the server where it just parses what kind of request uh, we have and with some logic with some software we, which is this the server basically server side uh, application which knows what to do and generates uh, the HTML file generates the data that we need and so on and this is sent back uh, to the browser hmm? um, that then will display it uh, or will update the page uh, the 90% of the uh, request HTTP requests uh, use only the get command uh, but uh, uh, the get pro uh, the HTTP protocol defines uh, several different uh, uh, methods it's called the methods or, or comments in HTTP and we'll see uh, later on for uh, the mechanism for interaction between the client and the server we rely on get but also on post uh, and put uh, basically and also sometimes also uh, we delete uh, uh, that we will use uh, to exchange data between the client and the server okay so some of these methods are used already by the browser to show the page but some of these methods will be used by our javascript code uh, for a different purpose hmm? so we'll come back to this table and understand in more detail the difference between these, these methods and how we can use them in our application for integrating data on the client and data on the server the last step uh, is uh, of course the, ser the server side mm -hmm. which is of less interest in, in this course of course because we'll have, uh, you will have later courses uh, for that and basically the server side is just uh, receiving just is uh, will be receiving the request from the http protocol and it needs to honor them it needs to create a response and this response can be generated uh, uh, directly or using the application logic that we wrote uh, for example in this course we are writing that in javascript but on the server there may be many different languages programming languages that we may use uh, to generate the dynamic responses so for the static responses the uh, the web server doesn't need any help uh, is able uh, by itself uh, to get the result from the file system and return the file but for dynamic responses where the result uh, must be computed in real time well uh, of course it needs the web server needs to integrate some programming language hmm? uh, for the set of this course uh, we will be using uh, one uh, module which is called express that will run uh, inside uh, inside node.js uh, that will perform this uh, uh, functionality of a web server hmm? um, um, okay so the the, the the purpose of web server by itself uh, is very simple it just has to manage the http protocol and give the responses and integrate with a, an application logic that is able to generate the pages that are needed uh, so the life cycle of the, HTTP, of the web server is uh, is very simple the, its main focus the main focus of web server is performance being fast and uh, uh, flexibility of integrating different programming languages or different application logics uh, inside the, the processing of the page okay then there are different technologies of course for for um, getting this performance but uh, it's not the focus of, of, of this course or not, nor of this lecture uh, what i wanted to show here i, I just I just have a couple of charts uh, where we see that there are several um, products uh, that we can use as um, as web servers um, they are more or less popular one of the most popular ones is the uh, web server from apache and this this company netcraft is doing its yearly reviews and uh, statistics uh, maybe it's more clear if you look at the share of this um, of these web servers across active sites uh, the first one was across all the general all the register sites so some of them are quite really old uh, so but currently we see that uh, um, the market share of the browser so how, uh, the servers so how many servers we have online are in uh, uh, apart the apache web server in most of the cases uh, 
um, and we have this other which is growing in some way and the second place is the nginx which is uh, so both apache and nginx are uh, open source products and they're very uh, and they're user locked uh, in the um, in this domain okay but if you want you can find more statistics in the websites in our case uh, in this course uh, we will be using uh, we will be creating web server inside node.js so node already provides a module called http which is already in the standard library of node.js that implements the basic functionality of web server but uh, as it always happens with javascript uh, when there is a solution there are 10 of them or tens of them um, and so there are many modules that are um, more let's say complex or more functional web servers uh, with respect to the basic uh, http module that do more functionalities and are easier to program and so on uh, we are going to use the express library uh, the express module that uh, is uh, easy to learn basically and uh, easy to program it's reasonably fast or efficient and it's integrated into into node and um, so i will um, we will use it uh, to create the back end of our applications so 90% um, of the effort for us will be to work on the front end but of course the front end will need at, some, at a given time uh, to store some data into the database or to do a query on the database and so it needs a web server to honor the request and to actually run the query mm -hmm. and so this will be uh, what we'll do uh, in the uh, towards uh, actually the, the last uh, four or five weeks of the course where we are putting the front end and the back end together. Express is not the only um, web server. Uh, there are several others that are being developed uh, and there are, these are four or five that were listed here are more or less the more popular in this moment, but also things here are changing uh, really, really quickly in this scenario. Hmm? Uh, so we made one choice which is the most popular one but uh, in specific cases you may you may want to evaluate them one thing to uh, to notice is that uh, uh, express or node.js is not not listed in this uh, um, picture so it's not one of the most popular ones the reason is quite easy all these uh, uh, web servers are much more performant much faster much more secure and uh, much more mature than just uh, our um, JavaScript module. Uh, so uh, if you have a, a real website that should sustain uh, a strong traffic, uh, I, you need to have a product which is focused on the web server. So something which is highly multi-threaded, compiled uh, in, in C, integrated with the operating system and so on, to squeeze every bit of functionality from the network and from the CPU. Uh, and this cannot be done with just an interpreter language like JavaScript into a single threaded uh, execution model like Node.js, of course. Um, and so we are using uh, Node.js for, for its ease of use and because it runs uh, 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 in JavaScript and JavaScript is the language of this course, uh, but in real settings probably the backend uh, will be implemented with a different uh, web server and with a different programming language uh, which is not uh, JavaScript plus uh, Express plus uh, running on Node.js, okay? Logically, nothing changes, but of course, uh, the technically, they are different products. Okay, uh, finally, of course, uh, uh, the web server is able to... Uh, the web server contains the application logic, so our code that will be executing, so if I'm looking like the example I did before, are there any new notifications uh, there is some code here that knows where the notifications are stored and they are likely stored into a table in a database maybe a relational database or in some cases maybe a non-relational database um, and this will be the choice if we have a very high traffic on our website when it's uh, more worth uh, optimizing the, some type of queries and not having a general solution like relation databases but it, that's a choice for for <laughs> for the database uh, guys and not for the web implementers guys uh, basically what we know is that our application logic will have basically to uh, query the database in some way and the that the data that are being returned by the database uh, 
should be integrated into the response that we give to the browser so uh, the uh, the api logic so we are we will be implemented some apis uh, some programming interfaces that the browser will be able to call over http when we receive an, an api request most of the cases we need to get the data from the database and return it to the browser that needs it so this, the role of the server basically is of the middleman that uh, will mediate the request of a javascript running on a browser that needs uh, a number to put here and will ask uh, through http to the server about this number the server will, will run my logic my logic will do a query and uh, the result of this query will be put into the http response uh, and will be received by the javascript that then will say that this number is three for example so this is the whole um, um, life cycle of uh, uh, whenever the, the javascript in the browser needs uh, some information or needs to update something uh, we have a, a set of functions that are defined on the server and may be called by the browser to update uh, the content uh, read or write uh, uh, new data from or to the database in the server so this is basically uh, the, the, the big picture of what we are trying to do uh, every uh, portion of this picture uh, implies different languages different technologies okay so at, at this level we know uh, we need we need to learn uh, express uh, we need to learn a bit about security uh, we need to learn about uh, sql queries uh, at this level we need to know about the http protocol to make uh, and the requests and here in the front end we need to know about the dom about html about uh, css uh, and of course about javascript above all and uh, the different libraries of javascript from which uh, react will be one of them the main uh, the main one uh, that we are going to use in the front end and so every piece of the picture uses different technologies and all of them must be put together in order to have one running application uh, we according to the current patterns of application design of web application design um, uh, where we are moving from a, a more traditional architectural pattern that we saw maybe five or ten years ago when we had basically an HTML based navigation where web pages were made of different web pages and each web page may have some javascript that will customize some specific behavior but when you click on, a, on something you will go to a different page and uh, uh, the new IT, a new html will, is loaded and a new uh, javascript will be loaded by that page so for example this is what happens with content manager systems like uh, you know the web the, the web page of our website uh, you have an address if i click somewhere you see that the page is reloaded and uh, uh, a new different page is loaded every time and then we have the javascript that is able to customize the content of the page of this page but mostly the navigation or the application structure is done by page by page navigation and the page the html is generated on the server side hmm? this was the traditional model if you had uh, maybe some php experience that is the model that we apply then uh, right now we are trying and these traditional models try to put together all the technologies so in this picture i tried to uh, summarize uh, uh, all the possible uh, paths of exchange of information where we basically have the see the left to right request and then right left response of http and this request and response cycle may be executed for pages uh, or for uh data hmm. this data can be encoded in normal in json so the pattern is the same but we are using for different purposes the browser will request page elements and the javascript will request uh, data information from the server and everything will reside probably in, uh, in the db but needs to be uh, ma mediated and managed by some server application logic and uh, client application logic so we have logic here this Light bulbs are our logic. Some of it is in the server. Some of it 
is uh, in the client in the front end for managing the interaction with the pa web page with the, through the DOM and the interaction with the server through external calls uh, that we, we will learn to call them fetch uh, because fetch uh, is the JavaScript method for calling an external server. Um, so this was the traditional method. We are now enriching it. Uh, we are moving towards the so-called single page application architecture. Single page application means that uh, um, the server only has one page to give, only one HTML page with some JavaScript and the JavaScript will create all the page on the front end. So basically the server is not involved uh, much on this uh, uh, page display or page response. This is not done except for the first page because of course it's needed. But, uh, for, but it's very interesting if you go probably, uh, probably to, if you open the Twitter website and you see the response to the home page of Twitter is basically an empty page with the script element that we wrote a JavaScript that will do all the work. So basically the server is not composing your, the page that you see. The server is just giving you a link to the JavaScript and this JavaScript is running, taking the control over your page and loading all the elements. So Twitter is pushing that to the extreme because the HTML is just an empty, an empty page, a white frame. Hmm? Um, the, we will see, we will create a, 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 an initial layout and then this initial layout will be changed a lot and populated by JavaScript code. Um, and so the, the comparison that we, we have in this picture, just to understand what we mean, uh, in the traditional model, you see that the, the server is in some way creating parts of the user interface and also providing some data to fill the elements of the interface. So the browser will use the, some JavaScript engine that asynchronously will communicate to the server, uh, with the server, and the server has some logic behavior. So, for example, the logic for moving from page to page or for validating data and so on was basically on the server. Right now we have these so-called uh, single page applications where all the logic has been moved or most of the logic has been moved to the browser, to the client. And uh, on data, we just have some simple layer for data access. So we can access data uh, using these uh, APIs, or these uh, APIs over HTTP that for which we just have uh, uh, we request some data or we request to change some data on the server side but all the logic for navigation for validation for interaction is all uh, and for page generations also has been moved into the client side so uh, once we have the initial page load everything will be inside the browser except when some data exchange or data updates uh, are required and so the javascript will in parallel asynchronously query the server so we are we are simplifying the server a lot uh, but of course we are loading all the browser all the front end with all the responsibilities of the whole application and uh, not just uh, of uh, um, the dynamic part of interaction like we have here in the first case uh, but uh, everything is done there um, <coughs> so that is what this part this uh, architecture is what we are going to learn here with the, with react uh, of course uh, it it has an advantage because there's only one place when you write the application but there are also some and it's faster and it's more responsive there's also the advantage because actually the html page doesn't exist anymore so the um, a search engine doesn't have any page to look at to to index basically because it gets an empty page um, if you are moving to different uh, uh, parts of the application, you are really staying in the same page. It's just uh, you are, we are just changing the content of that page to add or remove elements. And so uh, some uh, mechanisms that we are used to, like back and forward buttons, don't work anymore because they are expected to move uh, across different web pages. And here we are always in the same web page. So we need to take extra work uh, to make these buttons work uh, like we had hmm? and also beware that if we have all the logic in the client uh, 
well remember that the client is running on your user's computer and so uh, it's not uh, so safe so your users can see your code your javascript code can modify it uh, and can try to hijack into your website and so there are mechanisms that are used to try to protect uh, your server from being called by a modified version of your javascript hmm? so uh, you, you, you need to be more careful just because you are not running the application code your users will be running your application code and so of course you cannot trust all your users uh, uh, to behave correctly and so you have to have more security uh, levels um okay there are uh, and on top of this single page application pattern there are also uh, new trends uh, i will just only flash them uh, like uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, so-called isomorphic application if you have the same language on the server and on the, on the client like we had on javascript uh, you could think that the generation of the page can be done on the client or can be done on the, on the server with the same code and so in this case you will have uh, uh, both type of patterns the traditional one and the single page one running at the same cost at the same cost of one so the server could generate an html page or the client could generate the same HTML page, depending on the content, depending on what you want to do. So if you want to save a page, if you want to print it, if you want to let it index by search engine, well, it's better to generate it on the server. If you're serving it to a small computer with uh, low computational power, maybe you can have the work of composing the page in the server so that you don't overload the client. And it's the same, <coughs> and if you have a powerful client, then you can use the normal single page application. So it's a, it's a way of having the same logic and deciding where to run it, server or the client. There are libraries on Fragor for doing that. Or the, the another trend is the, the are the progress, progressive web applications that are especially uh, suitable for the mobile world, where you have a website, but that looks like a native application and uh, you develop it with uh, uh, javascript with browser technologies but it's so well integrated in the operating system that it looks like a real native application mm. and so we are reusing the same stack technology stack and the same know-how that we had for uh, web applications also for creating mobile applications but, but by the way um, we could create these uh, web applications uh, using a responsive framework so we run a browser uh, on our uh, mobile application and uh, and this browser of course is uh, calling some apis uh, over http from the server this is the normal way but with this pattern where all the logic is on the client uh, we could have a progressive web application so web application which is optimized for mobile or also a native application that recreates inside the Android or iOS operating system, whatever the interface, and calls the same APIs. So you see that the APIs that are called by this native application here are the same that are called by a web application, which is the desktop one or the mobile optimized one. They're all calling the same API. So the advantage of pushing the logic to the client is that you may have different types of clients, uh, web or native, so a browser, or a native application that will share the same set of server-side APIs. So this code will be identical and uh, independent from the front end that is accessing this information. So this is a, a good way or fast way to have the interaction logic on the front end with the technology support best supported by the front end and the um, server logic done just once by exposing a set of APIs. Um, for example, this was a job that the Polytechnico did when they started the first version of the Polito app. They had to publish uh, some APIs uh, for exposing some data about the students, about the timetable, the schedules, and so on. Uh, and this data is also used by other web services inside uh, the other Polytechnico application. So once the API is available, you can create different applications that use that information, which are which is a it's a, a very powerful architectural pattern that of uh, the separation between the server and the client okay 
I have one uh, last slide of, of statistics here uh, that will give us an idea of uh, how this general architecture has been implemented by different major companies. Uh, so these are some companies that you all know uh, where we can see uh, what kind of technologies they use to the front end and basically there's only one it's javascript because javascript is the only language being supported by the by the browsers so every company needs to use javascript in the front end because javascript is the only supported language by the browser while in the back end you see a lot of variability in the in the technologies uh, because the front end or well, in the front end runs in at, at your home at your server side and you can do whatever you want you have full control over the server side and you can decide your technology stack your languages whatever the kind of database that you want to use and so you see that on the server side there are a lot of uh, variability a lot of choices to make why on the client side you only have one programming language to go you can decide the libraries you can decide the frameworks to to help you write your code but basically the front end is all javascript as we know it if you not want to know a bit more about uh, the http protocol or the behavior internal behaviors of the of the browsers you can see this uh, this link which are in the form of a very easy to read uh, uh, comic book uh, and so they can tell you the story of what is uh, how the how the, um, the browser is behaving uh, so you have just a link uh, for uh, for a 10 minutes reading uh, or something like that about uh, the inside of the, how chrome is implemented in this case okay so i think uh, i hope this will give you uh, an overview of the uh, of the basically the general architecture that we are going to use so that when we in the next weeks uh, we are going to delve into one or one by one into these different technologies at least we have an idea of how they fit together uh, in, in, the, in the big picture in the general picture so we have in the several weeks uh, we will go and see uh, several technologies but at least we have the ending the ending point should be clear in our mind uh, the the whole and without the, all of them we cannot do we cannot complete the application so for example this is the reason why we will have to learn some, a bit of express js uh, a bit of server side programming because without that uh, the client side uh, cannot cannot just operate cannot uh, implement a, a full application okay so thanks for uh, uh, listening to this video and uh, i hope uh, you you okay uh, have a good general picture and on next week we will uh, start uh, looking at the front end and going into html and css as the language for creating and describing the web pages okay thank you for today and uh, have a nice day bye bye